Good evening. This is a message from the government. This is the 37th time we have spoken to you from this office. It is a government office, deep in a cave in an undisclosed location. This cave has all the amenities you can imagine necessary for human survival. We have canned food along with exercise equipment so that our minds and our bodies can stay sharp. Us proud members of the government have occupied this cave for 45 days. Many of us down here have become close friends and have gotten to know each other in ways that we have never before conceived. I am proud to say that there are many down here who feel a deep abiding love towards each other. Among those who are in this cave, there are others who have grown to resent one another. We look at each other with suspicion and malice. Some of us have split into factions and have let the stresses of cave dwelling deteriorate our common bond as humans. We speak about each other behind each other's backs and let imagined signifiers of power and status justify having authority over one another. In this cave, carved out by the proud members of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, we estimate to contain approximately 37 cubic feet of living space, making it close to size of the former Empire State Building. It is a shape different from the Empire State Building. Its mass is horizontal and contains hundreds upon hundreds of sprawling Byzantine paths. Some of us have explored deep into the spaces, wandering aimlessly through corridor after corridor in order to get an understanding of the vastness and wonder of this project. Each chamber we walk contains a new surprise, wonderful artisanal flourishes that quote the full range of America's architectural history. Some government employees have walked deep into the chambers of this cave only to never come back. Some of our peers feel compelled to walk into the twisting corridors, begin by dark voices that call out to them during times of quiet meditation, such as our mandatory evening reading times. Our group is gravely superstitious and paranoid about the possible supernatural forces that occupy our space with us, and so we have never sought to find the bodies of our peers. Those who hear the call we restrain. We tie them up in leather straps and listen to their screams as they pull at their tethers. Some of us have reported to seeing dark creatures, large, bug-shaped animals all black in color, through the corner of our eyes. They crawl up the walls and stretch their backs to impossible angles. I have been having dreams lately, terrible dreams, about the moon turning red and scorpions. Scorpions with flowing blonde hair crawling out of the ocean to grab our loved ones and drag them back into the sea. We feel at peace with ourselves here in the cave. We believe in the government mission and to work at our fullest capacity. It is a commune environment and we chant mantras about how each of us are equal and each of us play a role in the betterment of the American people. I see in each of us a leader, whoever it be logistical leaders, those who know how to delegate and have the competence to see the larger picture, or emotional leaders, those who can inspire and make us laugh. Both are equally important, and both are the backbone to a strong government. We have split both into groups and have instructed them to fight it out. It is hard down here, but we are the government and we promise to endure whatever hardships we must to serve you. You will be glad to hear that the government continues to operate at its fullest capacity. Our government workers have been working hard, and we will continue to work hard in order to maintain the continuity of our democracy. Thank you for your time.
she's Canadian. Mm -hmm. uh, we went on a date once, and it didn't go well. Ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> you were like, can I come back to your uh, place? No way. I need a back <laughs> massage. Oh, no. no, no. no. All right, this is my friend. I just want to lay down. No, wait, you can't talk. It's a kid. You can't talk about your, stuff like that. Your father's a scumbag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is my friend. That's why he let go of you. He let you get adopted. <laughs> Sorry, what? Do you guys want some vodka? Hello. You have reached the National Park Service at Mount Rushmore National Memorial. The park is open. However, the administrative offices are currently closed. If you know the extension of the party you wish to reach, please enter it now. For information about the park, please... I'm sorry. One is not a valid choice. Please try again. Pets are not... For I'm sorry. Two is not a valid choice. Please try again. <laughs> Pets are not permitted. I'm sorry. Three is not a valid choice. Please try again. Get it. Pets are not permitted in or on the memorial grounds. Except in... I'm sorry. Five is not a valid choice. Please try again. Hi, you've reached the Oregon Administrative Support Service. Please leave your name and number and I will return your call as soon as possible. Thanks. Have a great day. After the tone, please record your message. When finished, you may hang up to deliver the message or press pound for more options. Hello, uh, this is John Field. Uh, I was calling wondering if you guys are taking suggestions for new heads on the side of the Washington Monument. I have over three suggestions that I think will add to the monument. Uh, if you could call me back, you can call me at 786-493-3441. Thank you very much and thank you for your service. <laughs> Alright, so Michael, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, it's like podcasts mm -hmm. are really big right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, we, get, we got mics, we got headphones mm -hmm. for our ears, and, and we got two great people, so let's, I, I'm going to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're gonna we're gonna broadcast it all over the internet. Mm. It's gonna become really big. So you you, you, you want to do a podcast? Sure. You you want to do it right now? We yeah. Can start at it right now. All right. So um, let's let's chi chi. Uh, you wanna you wanna count us off? Hello? Hello? Oh, somebody just texted me while we're doing it. All right, yeah. let's try to do it again. Just start with five. <laughs> five. Four. Three. Hello? Hello? And thank you for listening to Teen Fashion Advice. I'm John, and I have my special guest star, Michael. Here. Did I say, why did I say Michael? Yeah, it's you are, fine. Uh, That's fine. Michael's here. fine. Uh, we have our special guest star, Michael, here today. Michael, you uh, have anything you'd like to promote off the top? Um, yes, I would like to promote my web series entitled The System, which can be seen on YouTube under my name, Michael A. Quarry. Or Michael Quarry, excuse me. It's called The System. YouTube. Check it out. I'm actually in You are system. in it, and you did a very good job. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. No. We're here to talk about uh, the theme of our show is uh, talking about teen fashion. Mm. So, Michael, what, what can you tell us about? What's the most important thing about teen fashion? Um, that they're all wearing clothes. That's a good sign. Um, it's good. I wish I was wearing some of what they're wearing. Um it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, designers and stuff and it's good. It's good.
It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Uh, it, Can't afford it, but it's good. Like teen fashion. Right. But you're not a teenager. No. No. I, no. What's, what's the do – do you know the number one fashion brand for teens right now? I do not. I don't. Do you? I was kind of hoping that you would know. No, I don't. You don't know. Guess, I guess. You can make a guess. Guess. Jinko. Jin- who's Jinko? Jinko jeans? No, guess jeans. Guess jeans. Oh, guess, you're, guess, you guess. Me to, I thought you wanted me to guess. No, the company brand is guess. That's the top brand. For- right. As far That's the first thing that comes to my mind is that, guess. So that's your guess? Yes. That's what you would... Assume is the top. You're right, but I don't know brand. the other. I don't know the other brands because I'm not really up on f- teen fashion. I mean, I was home one day when you called me. I'm not an expert on teen fashion, but thank you for asking me to come down. Um, I was hoping that you would be an expert on teen fashion. Yeah, not really up my alley though. But thank you anyway. I mean, I wasn't doing much. I was just sitting home trying to, you know do stuff until you call me if you could give teenagers advice on fashion Mm. what would it be make sure your colors are coordinated how would you do that you wear colors that match or kind of blend in with each other i don't know that's just you reiterated like what how what colors match how do you know what colors match well, like what you have, like what you have on, that kind of goes together. Oh, thank you. The McDonald's color. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess make sure you wear your your blues properly and your blacks properly. I guess. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get David because he's closer. No, no, you're good. <sighs> this is my friend David. Hello. She's not my friend Andrea. He's not my friend Andrea who... 
who is not my friend anymore. <laughs> no, you got played. She yeah. just played you she just played on your own you. show. What's, uh, you got a girlfriend? I do have a girlfriend, yes. You, don't like, you like reading. I, I read sometimes, yes. What was your favorite book as a kid? As a child would be the series of unfortunate events books. Oh, okay. What was that one about? Uh, well, they were a series of books about these orphans who uh, didn't have parents, and <laughs> thank you. I got it from uh, uh, Community Access Studios. Very good. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Hey, hey, Megan. Tell me a joke. No. Like a street joke. <laughs> I don't know. I'm blanking. You tell me a street joke and then I'll tell it back to you. All right, this one's my favorite one of all time. Dude, these people, like, people oh, somebody, it's free. Yeah. All right, joke. Um, uh, uh, nurse is going through a mental hospital and she's like looking into each door and she sees like one in one door, Todd's there. And Todd. 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 Oh, Todd. I thought you said a Todd like a. No, no. Like a, you know how sometimes you call a little kid like a tater tot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so Todd's like in it, like on his bed, and he's like driving, and she goes like, "Todd, what you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm driving to Chicago." And she's like, "All right, good night." So she turns off the lights, comes back the next day, and she looks into Todd's uh, cell, and he's like looking like this, and he's like, "Todd, did you make it to Chicago?" He's like, "Yeah." And then she looks in the corner, and his roommate Rod is there, and he's just furiously masturbating. He's like, "Rod, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Well, Todd's on vacation. I'm fucking his wife." <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, what do you got? So there's this nurse. Yeah. And she was in a works in a mental hospital. Yeah. And she was walking in a room and she saw Todd and he was going like this. And she was like, "What are you doing, Todd?" And he was like, "I'm on vacation." No, I fucked up. And he was like, "I'm driving to Chicago." And she was like, "Okay, whatever, bye." Turned off the light and then she came back the next day and Todd was awake and he was like, "Oh, did you make it to Chicago?" And he was like, "Yeah, I did." And then she saw Todd's roommate, and he was, like, fiercely masturbating. And he was like, Rod, that's his roommate, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, well, Todd's on vacation. I'm fucking his wife. You just stole my fucking joke. I told you that was what I was going to do. I don't know street jokes. I thought you were going to, like, think of a joke. No, I told you. I was like, you're going to tell me a joke, and then I'm going to precisely tell it back to you. What exactly happened is going to be what's broadcast on the show. Wait, are you joking? No, you don't want that? No? No, I don't want that. All right. That would have been a good segment. Um, uh, <laughs> that would have been a good five minutes I could fill in my show. <laughs> I mean, maybe. No, no, you're not okay with it. I think it's pretty bad. All right. All I did was retell your joke, but worse. But the funny back and forth of you, okay. of, of yeah. me telling a joke, and you're like hearing this fucking asshole, and him running around, I think it might be good TV. I'll send a link to you, and yeah, if you like it. Yeah, send a link, and I'll let you know. You hear about this 9-11 thing? No. You look like Paul Lind, by the way. Huh? You're dressed like Paul Lind. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard this Paul Lind story where he goes to the Playboy Club? Yeah. And um, no, he goes to the Playboy Mansion, mm. and he just walks in, and he goes like, it smells like pussy, I think. Think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, I'm gonna stand behind you, it'll work. How does it work? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, we're wrong. Everybody get going, everybody's gonna die.
die. We're all gonna live forever. Just I like to eat pie. Yee-haw! Mama, mama, everybody's gonna die. Gina walked in the studios while we're shooting. Gina, come on in. Yeah, banjo music. Keep it going. Yeah, we're done. Okay. How'd it look? Good. All right, good. What was this for? Uh, just, this is gonna be like a piece on the show. It's just gonna be a thing. It's There's gonna... another piece I'm not getting paid for? <laughs> it's cut. You're so. Damn it. Oh, oh boy. All right, Daniel. Hey, doing this for your son. Don't mean to be selfish. Hey, John, how are you? Hi, this is my friend Daniel. How are you? How are you? Uh, are you being loud? Am I enough? Is this loud enough? Yeah, you can. Don't the eat the mic. I don't know. This is why no. you don't work with friends. <laughs> no, no, go. Well, I swear, I'll yeah, do. Yeah, I'll yeah. do like a good thing. Hi, hi, I'm John. Hey, John. This is. This is my best friend Daniel. Hey, how are you? In the entire world. We're making this video just for you. So in five years, you could look back on this and say, wow, that was my dad before he killed all those people. <laughs>